Hi, and welcome back to our third installment of our tutorial for building a one-piece spender style neck. We're going to be focusing on the truss rod channel today, and you'll see I have marked up our blank with some measurements, uh, give you a bit of an idea of what's actually taking place and uh, just the mechanics of it. Now, most of you probably already know the purpose of the truss rod, so I won't go into the detail of that. But uh, you'll see that uh, we have uh, two different depths for the heel end and the headstock end of the truss rod. Uh, the finished end, the finished depth for the heel end is uh, 5 8 and the headstock finished depth is 3 quarters, giving us a difference of, a, of an eighth. That's because the arc isn't um, asymmetrical to the neck, and um, the, actually the radius is 147 inches. Uh, just for a bit of extra information and you'll see that I've marked out the starting point of the truss rod route which is 2 and 5 eighths from the heel of the neck and it goes for a distance of 14 and 5 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, we have an entrance hole at the heel of 2.8 degrees and the exit hole is 3 degrees. Uh, that accounts for the 1 eighth of an inch deviation in the depths. Okay, here we've got a nice close-up view of the side of the neck where I've marked it up. You can see the dimensions and the angles there. You can pause if you need to. And uh, you can jot that down for your own use. And that should give you all the information that you need to do your uh, jig setup and your final route. We're going to move on to the back of the neck now. Okay, here we're looking at the bottom side of the neck. And you'll see I've marked out the starting position of the route and the end. Uh, point. Uh, this is just for visual representation. I won't really need that when I'm using the jig because that's already set up with stops. But you'll see I'm using a quarter inch uh, wide route. I'm using a round tip quarter inch bit for that. Uh, that keeps the rod nice and tight to the channel. And uh, I'll show you the jig and see how that works. Okay, this is our truss route jig. Um, what I have here, I, it was actually at the beginning a lot base, more basic than this but I've added a few things. You notice I have rails on the inside to hold the neck in place from moving side to side and I also have a bit of a clamping system here. You notice on the sides here I have uh, my stop for the end of the route and that way it keeps everything in the same place and for moving. So basically I just drop my uh, neck into the rails and I use these uh, simple bars and uh, quarter by 20 bolts and I would bolt those in at the heel and at the headstock and that would be my clamping system for the for the neck and from here I would uh, lay my uh, router in here it's a six uh, inch distance all the way across it's nice and snug so it isn't going to move anywhere and that should give me a fairly decent straight and wobble free uh, route and a, a very secure jig. Also while we're looking at the jig, I'll just take these out, I have an end block here I'll just show you. This end block is actually um, set up for my heel drill hole and it is at a 2.8 degree angle already to accept the bit. I have these template uh, bushings that are uh, at, I have an insert for a 3 8 and an insert for a 3 16 drill bit. I'll use that to guide my drill bit through and that can be moved around and taken off if I need to. Also at the headstock side, when I actually do it, I uh, have a, a second block here that I use. And this block will give me my 3 degree angle and I, same thing, I use a, an insert for the, uh, the 3 8 bit and a 3 16 bit to do my hole for the headstock for doing the plug. Uh, when I do a, I'm doing two necks actually, one is going to have the heel adjustment nut and the other will have a headstock adjustment nut at the headstock side and I'll be doing things differently on the bottom of the, of the neck. I won't need to do the hole at the heel obviously, so that'll be a little bit of a different uh, setup. So that's basically uh, the jig here. I'm just using a uh, one half inch or five eighths uh, birch plywood bottom, and I just scrounged some stuff out of the garage for my ra my rails. And so one piece rail. I just took a pattern and routed my 
routed my arc in here and uh, just created a, a, a rail to the side of it out of the same piece and I just mirrored it and did the same to the other side. Laid it all out and got my center lines, added my blocks and the rails and I got myself a decent little jig here and does everything I need. And once that's all done, we can look at uh, building the truss rod itself and installing it with the skunk strip. And that'll be tutorial number four. Okay, here I've added a few more shots, a little more of a close-up view of what I've done with the jig. Um, those rails are optional. I, I've used them and I've not used them. They're just a 1 8 inch by 3 quarter aluminum angle and just screwed in following the flare of the neck and just holds it into place a little more securely. Uh, those holes that are drilled down the center line are the end points of the channel and I've used that previously to line it up for my end hole uh, drilling for the entrance and exit for the truss rod and this is just a close-up shot of the arc running along the one of the side rails and you also see the stops that I've uh, used there. Another shot with the neck in place ready for the route. Um, that heel clamp I have two configurations you'll see it later on where I'm coming in off of the end and using a, a block off the back and it gives me a little better control. Okay, now we're going to see a few shots of the routing process. Uh, here we're just um, working the initial pass. And you see the clamp there with a block off the back. And uh, you may want to uh, pause the video just to see what I've done there. That's my alternate uh, configuration for the clamp. <coughs> here we have a, a, a lengthwise shot from the headstock to heel. And what I usually try to do is just one pass. I don't like coming back over what I've just done just in case something were to happen and I end up wreck wrecking my route. I just, uh, I'm using an older router so when it comes to the end I just let it wind down. I don't have a break or anything on that router. And so it just takes a couple seconds for it to wind down and then I change my depth and do another pass. Here you can see uh, another shot. I'm doing this by myself holding the router with my right hand and the camera with the left hand, uh, gingerly coming along the rails there, taking my time. I made sure the depth wasn't uh, too deep so I could have a little more control, just to give you an idea of what's happening there and you can kind of see what's going on. You've all probably done it before, so it's nothing new. Just a side note, I take about five to seven passes when I'm doing a truss rod route. Uh, it gives me a finished depth of three quarter inch at the headstock and five eighths at the heel. Now let's have a look at the finished product. Okay, here are the two necks that I'm going to be working on. One is the headstock adjustment and one has the heel adjustment nut. Uh, just a couple camera sweeps of the truss rod routes we've just finished doing. Just another shot, just to give you an idea what to look for, what it looks like, and just to show off some of the work. Here you see the center line is nicely lined up with the route, so everything should be nicely in line once I do my end hole drilling. And one last shot, you can see a little more of the route. Nice and clean, there's no wobble with having those rails tight against the disc of the router base. It uh, keeps things nicely in line and uh, you have less problems of things moving around. All right, now it's on to making a truss rod and our skunk strip and drilling our end holes to install our truss rod. We'll see you there.